Hello loved ones, thank you for joining me today and if you're new to the channel then welcome to the family. Today we will review Married at First Sight Season 16 Episode 24. This was Nashville Reunion Part 1 and I am here for it. If you are excited about a particular scene, please see the timestamps in the description box. To be a part of the congregation, please subscribe. To be part of the conversation, please comment. And to contribute to today's offering, please drop a like in the collection plate. And with that, let's get started. The reunion was hosted by Kevin Frazier, and he begins with his first question. How was it being seen on national television and your love life being commented on by strangers? Nicole said she finally got a taste of her own medicine and she did not like it. Gina was surprised to be recognized in places outside of Nashville. And Kirsten said she has been recognized as Shaquille's wife at open houses. For her question is, do you wanna buy this house? Because I need some money. Dominique reveals that she has received more unhappy people than happy people in her direct messages. And she has received some crazy requests to send pictures of her cleavage for money. Jasmine has been told several times that Gil is her perfect match, even though Dominique and Gil were seen on the show and Dominique and Gil continue to keep in touch. Dominique says, Gil is a solid and fun guy. Cliff now lives in the same building as Nicole and Chris and now is the second husband in their relationship. Cliff hangs out at the dog park with Nicole and cooks them great dinners. We again review that McKinley moved. Although Dominique was not surprised, McKinley insists that he had plans to stay in Nashville. This is when I noticed how Dominique was sitting. She had a pillow between her and McKinley and she leaned against it. Watching when the pillow appeared and when it did not gave me an indication of how editing happened and how the conversations were sliced. I'm not saying that it was good or bad or that the editors did anything shady, but it was so interesting for me to watch the movement of the pillow. It appeared that there were two group interactions taped. I will make note of when the pillow was there and when it was not for context. We move on to the next scene and the pillow is not there, showing Dominique with her new dog and the unnecessary shots from McKinley saying that she is 25, works nine to five, parties on the weekend and likes to travel. He feels so sorry for the dog and he then called her immature. He admits that he knew it would hurt her feelings and he took the lowest blows and realized that he was wrong in the moment. They then reviewed the clip where Clint was saying that he liked slender and athletic women and Gina getting upset by confronting him about the comment. Nicole says she called him out of his name and was ready to make him regret his words. Gina says she heard a direct comment about her weight. She said it sounded accusatory because he did not know how often she worked out at the time. Gina, you can work out all day long. Slender and athletic is a body type and some of us just don't have it no matter how hard we try. Clint says he went through a 40 minute apology. His intent was not to body shame, but to show that they both have a type that they are attracted to. Chris asserts that they were just being overly honest. They then jump to the clip of Chris saying that Nicole is a little thicker than what he is normally used to. Chris says you say things in a way that you really do not mean. I'm so glad that Clint did not walk back what he said and stuck to the point he was making that he was attracted to a different body type than what Gina has. I still don't see anything wrong with what Clint said. I truly believe that men are judged more harshly for their preferences. On the last episode, the cast tell-all, Tristan was crucified for saying he does not want to date someone darker than him. However, if a woman says, I want a man that's tall, dark, and handsome, that's fine. We don't hear any comments about her discriminating against light-skinned brothers. If a woman says she wants a man with an athletic build or football player physique, 
We all know what that means and no one is offended. I think we need to be more balanced in that area. I am still team plant in this area and I think that we should be able to see on our reality shows that people do have different body types and different preferences. I am not somebody that tr Tristan would want because of course you can see I'm darker than him, but I'm not offended because he would not be as attracted to me because he likes a lighter toned woman. Now I do understand that a lot of people may get mad about that comment because they feel like it relates to slavery and colorism, you know, the paper bag test and all of that. And that could be true. That, that definitely could be a part of that, but it still is a part of our reality. So I think instead of crucifying the person for having their preference for whatever reason, that we should begin a dialogue on the conversation as to why and maybe how we can change that in some of the people going forward, or maybe it's something that we don't even need to change. I think it's more of a conversation than a crucifixion and that we should allow not crucify people for their different preferences even though it could be steeped and rooted in history. Doesn't have to be, but that is an option. They then move on to Cousin Paulina calling Jasmine fake. They then show a never before scene of Eris and Jasmine, where Eris says he thinks Jasmine is intimidated by Cousin Paulina because she does not want to be around her. Eris says Jasmine looked like she worked a 16 hour shift. Jasmine says she has enough going on and she just got married and does not want to be around someone who is not rocking with her. Eris says he likes strong people who can hold their own. They say that this was a never before seen footage, but I feel like we've heard and seen this before. Let me know what you think in the comments. Kirsten believes that Eris should have taken Jasmine's side. And Gina points out that because Jasmine is eloquent in speech, that does not mean she is fake. And it takes a strong woman to set a boundary when there is a potential for toxicity. Dominique says Eric should have put his foot down. Jasmine says she felt unsupported and does not feel that she is being weak because she did not want to be around Paulina. McKinley tried to chime in to show that Eris was conflicted because he had a new wife and a relative that he's known all of his life. But Jasmine shut him down saying he should have had his wife's back. Eris agrees that his cousin Falina was wrong, that Jasmine is not fake because she could answer a question. He says he took his cousin's side because he heard half of the story and he has known his cousin his entire life. And he had just met Jasmine and he did not even know her for 24 hours, which was the point that McKinley was trying to make. For me, this is real talk. I have been married 25 years and it took me at least 10 years before I would abandon my family for my husband. It's about relationship. There are times now in my marriage where my in-laws trump me. I don't like it, but life goes on. It's really hard to break the bonds of family. I know the Bible says we are to leave and cleave, but doing it and what it looks like is really hard to implement. Personally, in situations when I think it's a potential where my husband might have to choose a side, I fall back and try my best not to move forward so there can be peace in the Middle East. This is real and I'm sure a talking point in every marriage. I actually don't fault Eris. He knew Jasmine for less than 24 hours. Here is where I think they need the experts to speak life into their situation. Eris said on decision day, something to the fact that he wanted Jasmine to love herself. I'm wondering if these are the things he does not like about Jasmine. I'm guessing, but maybe he wanted someone who could hold her own and speak up in times like this to his cousin instead of avoiding it by saying she does not want to be around her. I think he wanted someone who could deal with conflict in a healthy, non-toxic way. 
Aris took the high road on this one and he apologized to Jasmine on behalf of himself and his cousin. That's the way to shut a conversation down and move to the next point. During this portion of the conversation, there is no pillow between Dominique and McKinley. So, oh, very, very interesting. Moving on, we then welcome Eris and Jasmine for their one-on-one -on -one with Kevin. Jasmine looked like the pageant queen that she is. She looked absolutely beautiful. Eris was more casual with his tennis shoes on, but he looked very handsome as well. Eris reveals that he will not speak on what he did not like about Jasmine because he will be nailed to the cross. And out of respect for Jasmine and her family, he will not reveal what the issue is, but he talked to Jasmine several times in private. Jasmine says that she liked Eris and was trying to put her best foot forward. She did not like having him put her in the friend zone on the honeymoon and was glad that Eris was honest with her. They then show the clip of Eris wanting someone that's between Serena Williams and Zendaya in body type. Jasmine meets that criteria, but Eris says the issue does not relate to body. They then move on to the after party clip where Jasmine reveals that Eris slept with her friend before they were married or even knew each other. Jasmine has an idea of what Eris is attracted to and says that her and her friend are exact opposites. They then show a clip where Eris says he wants an open marriage in 20 years, but he admits that he said it for the cameras because he was tired of filming. And when that happens, he plays in our faces. He immediately told Jasmine that he was just playing once the cameras left. We then welcome Jasmine's friend, Adrian, who is going to speak on Jasmine's behalf. I think this is the kind of thing that Eris sees as weak. Jasmine is the only one who needed someone to speak for her. I think this is a clue to Eris's issue. Since he refuses to tell us, I must play detective and speculate. Adrian says the cameras captured the real action. She was concerned about Jasmine's mental space because she was searching for something she could not obtain. Now we all search for things that are unattainable. Could this be another sign of Eris's concern? She was concerned about Eris's age and him never being in love. She was concerned because Falina's action was disrespectful. Now let's talk about that. Do you think Falina was disrespectful because she made a judgment about Jasmine? I have a problem with that. She is on a reality television show stating her true opinion and because we don't agree with it, which I did not agree with it, but I would not label her as disrespectful for having a different opinion than I do. The thing that I like about Felina most is that she was honest with Jasmine in her face. She did not say anything about Jasmine to the cameras that she did not say directly to Jasmine. I think because Eris has grown up with women like Felina that can speak their truth with conviction, whether others agree or, or not, then that may be the reason why he sees Jasmine as weak and not his type. Oh my. Adrian saying that Falina should have been supportive in his journey to marry a complete stranger is wild to me. Everyone is not going to agree with the crazy things we do and you should always have people in your life able to challenge you and your decisions we don't only want yes people around us. Cousin Falina was supportive by attending and she only spoke her opinion when asked. I, like Eris, think they are making too much out of this. I disagree with Kevin. I agree that we want all to win when they come on the show, but he says we want everyone to be supportive. 
However, I want the real and some people in our family will have a different view and I think that's fine to hear because that is reality. There are some people who know each other and get married and their families don't agree. Let's take Cynthia on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Her family was debating on hiding her marriage license to Peter because they did not want her to marry him. Personally, I want to see the real of reality. I was not happy with Cousin Felina and I did not agree with what she said about Jasmine, but that's because I had already fallen in love with Jasmine and I knew her sweet character once Cousin Falina entered the scene. But I don't think she was wrong or disrespectful for speaking her truth. Adrian says the marriage did not work because Jasmine is more reserved related to intimacy. However, she believes that on television, Jasmine was reserved in her speech based on her mentorship with young people, but behind the cameras, she would be Meg the Stallion. She came with the heat for Eris, but leaves as friends. They hug and they call it good. This speaks to Eris' character and shows even in person, he has maintained a respectful demeanor towards Jasmine. Eris has begun volunteering based on his interaction and the influence of Jasmine. He says that he did not go on a second date with Kendra, which I didn't think he would. He is dating and taking his time to recover from this journey. Jasmine is dating friend boy, and it was her who did not want his identity revealed on the show. She plans to continue with her girls and open up an esthetician shop. I guess her and Kristen will not be pursuing the party bus. Moving on, we see Nicole and Chris in their one-on-one -on -one discussion with Kevin. Nicole gives Kevin a hard time for believing she would drive Chris crazy. They then show a never before scene of Nicole talking to producers about Chris's dogs. But I feel like I've seen this before. Every time on this reunion, they show a never before scene I feel like I have seen it before. Let me know what you all think. Maybe they featured these clips on the after party and that's why I feel like I've seen them before. But let me know if you have seen the never before seen footage. But Chris admits that he was overwhelmed because he thought his dogs were taken care of. And Nicole says that she is solution oriented and she will continue to talk to people until there is just no one else to talk to. I really believe that this is the difference in their relationship than Clint and Gina. I think that the exact opposite happened. During the honeymoon, they had this particular incident that solidified their marriage and pulled them closer together, where Gina and Clint, they had the slender athletic comment where it tore them apart. So I feel like because this was at the beginning of the relationship, that is something that kind of like, kind of like define their relationship moving forward because Chris could gain trust in Nicole and how she would respond in particular situations. We then move on to the dinosaur outfit at breakfast and they both admit that they both regret this particular action. They say that they were unaware that the cast was waiting for them downstairs to help prepare breakfast. So Nicole says that she regrets asking Chris to dress up like a dinosaur. And Chris says he regrets doing it. They then move on to talk about Nicole and how she has outbursts. But she says that her outbursts are short-lived. She says she has to get things out and then she is able to recover quickly. Chris admits that this is an area in which he has had to adjust and in those moments, he just gives her space. I can relate to this. I have those people in my life where I'm like, hey, I need to say this out loud. I have one sorority sister that is the most that we talk. I call and say, hey, I need to say space to say something that I might not say out loud to others. 
Most times I call her because I do not have to start at the beginning. I'm like, remember when I was irritated about whatever it was? And she'll say yes. And I'll be like, I need to add on to the irritation. And once we hang up, I can just move on with the situation and just put it behind me. And it's really interesting because I need to say it, but I need to say it to someone, which is when I call her. Now, what I would love to do is I love to write in my journal. So I really would like to just write those things down and just be able to move on that way. But I can totally relate to what Nicole is saying. Sometimes you just got to get it out and then once it's out, you can move on. Well, I can move on. Let me know if you have that issue as well. They say they are doing well, and Chris is doing well by speaking up for himself and caring for himself. They then show a never before seen footage of Chris and Nicole just having fun, which I thought was great because sometimes we wondered, did they ever have fun? Because they were always showing us their deep, conversations so it is glad to see that they mix some fun in with that as well they are doing well and chris is doing well speaking up for himself and caring for himself they then show a never before scene of chris and nicole just having fun and i was really glad to see it because they showed us so many of the deep conversations that some of us often wonder were they ever just having fun? They say that their marriage has been fun. The dogs are doing well and they are looking for a home and they will revisit the conversation of related to kids in about a year. They call Nicole's dad and introduce him to Kevin. Nicole's dad indicates that he has always liked Chris and that Chris is stable for his daughter and their marriage will last forever. He says the families have merged, which includes the cast. Nicole says she has grown and she deserves love and happiness and they are pouring into each other. They are the cutest couple and I think they will have a lasting marriage. Moving on, we see the ladies have a one-on-one -on -one with Kevin. And I felt like this was a filler because I did not think that there was much meat in these conversations. However, I love Jasmine's dress the best. And then Dominique's, I thought her dress was cute as well. I loved Kirsten's hair the best. And then Dominique's, Dominique had the little updo. So I really loved hers, but I love Kirsten's hair the best. For me, the rest of the looks, they were cute, but you know, nothing really spectacular. I think I really like the sparkly things, which is why I like Dom, um, Jasmine's and then Dominique's. And I love the elaborate, just, you know, I felt like Kirsten's hair was beautiful. But they admit that they have a strong bond and Nicole is the mama bear and she is the counselor of the group. Nicole says that she is a counselor because she is nosy and she is invested. They move on to a never before scene of Jasmine breaking down and how they all rallied around her when they were at, I think it was like the little sip thing when she was at her breaking point with Eris. And she says that she really did need that and she really did need them at that moment. The next clip is the guys saying that they have resumed their intimate activities and it's a clip with Clint, Eris, and McKinley. And none of the women are surprised. They then do what they do in all of the episodes where they go around and they ask each of the ladies what type of guy would be best for the single women in the group who did not say yes. Nicole says that Shaquille or someone like Shaquille will work for Kirsten. Nicole says Shaquille bought Kirsten out of her shell and she is not willing to give up on them yet. This is interesting because there is a photo with Shaquille, Kirsten, Nicole, and Chris at an event, and I believe this photo was taken after the season wraps. I'm almost ready to throw in the towel with Shaquille and Kirsten, but since Nicole knows the rest of the story, 
maybe there is a little bit of hope. So that was really surprising to me in this girl interaction. Moving on, we see Clint and Gina have their one-on-one -on -one with Kevin. Gina starts with her negativeness of Clint by saying he had a glow up because he got a haircut. Honestly, it's not a big difference to me. I think she takes a jab at him as often as she possibly can. They move on to Gina's negative swag comment, but she says he now has swag. They are unsure as to why their relationship did not move to attraction. They say they did the best they could throughout the process. They then roll the tape showing that Gina was the body type Clint requested. Although he said he gravitates to slender and athletic, I don't think that was the main issue for Clint. I think he was willing to move past it, but Gina friend zoned him. So it did not work out and he was not able to overcome that barrier. They show us a clip to let us know that they had a travel delay. They traveled internationally. The airlines lost their luggage. They got lost on an excursion and Clint had the stomach flu, but they both handled the setbacks with grace and ease and really got along in the midst of it. Clint admits that the bump in the road came early, which set a precedent and a tone that they were not able to work through. They say they are closer now and they hang out since the show ended. And Kevin asks if they could be revived. And Gina says, no, she is not attracted to Clint. Gina says that she could have opened up, but when Clint was sharing his life, which she deems as something small, there was another jab that she took at Clint. She did not pick up on him wanting to know more about her. She had business challenges during the season. She lost $100,000 during her build out. And also, as we saw, she lost an employee. Clint says he did say in the beginning that she came to promote her business. Gina takes that opportunity to take another dig at Clint and the audience by saying, when emotions are high, intelligent is low. I guess none of us are intelligent since most of us watching felt like she came on the show to promote her business. But she never misses an opportunity to take a stab at Clint and he just takes it like a champ. He says he does not think that now, but he feels that she is just so involved in her business that that is just who she is. There is nothing new for Gina, but Clint is dating with the intent to marry and he is traveling. Moving on, we see Kirsten and Shaquille have their one-on-one -on -one with Kevin. I love that they are matching. I think they are so cute together. They are the cutest couple on this reunion episode, which is why I really wanted to keep hope alive. Throughout the scene, they sat close but Shaquille looked so defeated, which makes me think that they did not resume their relationship. Kirsten is working and traveling and she is about to take a trip to Hawaii. Shaquille went back to therapy. He continues to work on his doctor's degree and he took a new job in Austin, Texas, which I was so sad to hear because at the beginning of the season, I thought he was a recruit and so my question is, did he take the job that he originally turned down? Did he plan to move? We know his job is fluid, but this just makes it harder for them to rekindle their relationship and makes me think that it is actually over. They do small check-ins every now and then, and they are cordial to one another. Kirsten says it took her time to process, and once she was able to process it, she could then resume communication. Shaquille says that they needed more time, but Kirsten and Kevin point out that if they needed more time, he should have said yes on decision day. They show the clips where they were never on the same page. 
Kirsten says they did not talk after filming about their relationship, and Shaquille admits that they should have seeked counseling on how to communicate with one another during the show. Kirsten says that Shaquille is not focused on things that he is not interested in, and she feels that he was not interested in her. Shaquille says he wanted to like Kirsten, but he put a lot of pressure on himself, in which Kristen identified and told him not to do. They each say, looking back, they can now acknowledge their own flaws. Shaquille says he said no because he got a call from a prophet in his PhD program. Not the prophet. Is this the same prophet who we heard about from Drew and Latoya on Real Housewives of Atlanta? Is this a godly prophet? Is this someone who speaks with biblical authority? I need to know more about the prophet. Well, before I go in on him some more, let's continue. He said that the prophet told him he had a big decision to make and it may be a time for him to be selfish and make a decision for himself. Kirsten was uncertain on decision day of what Shaquille's decision would be. Shaquille says he did not feel like he could be what Kirsten needed because she wanted it to be them in this world and wanted to spend more time with him? Can someone please make it make sense? He said he felt lack of support. Heaven and I are so confused on how that relates to his expectations that he would say no on decision day. He then moves on to say he was not sure if him and Kirsten were soulmates. Thank you, Kevin, who again gets him in his place to let him know that most of us are not married to our soulmates. Our spouse grows into our heart and soul. Great job, Kevin. Kirsten says, and I agree, that Shaquille did not want to be married. And if he wanted to be married to someone, you don't ask them for a divorce. Shaquille says, ultimately, he did not think he was good enough for Kirsten. Kevin asked if Shaquille regrets his decision and we end on a cliffhanger until next week. All right, you all can get me in the comments. I am so disappointed with Shaquille. My assumption can be wrong, but he came on the show, in my opinion, with the Christian lingo. He has scriptures prominently posted and spoke of a spiritual relationship. For me, when I see that, I expect we know what happens when we put our expectations on others, which is why I am sitting here heartbroken over their failed marriage. But I did put my expectations on Shaquille. And I take marriage seriously when it comes to those of us who are on a spiritual journey with Christ. So I don't see any biblical reason why he should have said no on decision day and believe because God ordained marriage, he should have said yes. I don't think being selfish as the prophet encourages him to is in the word of God. If he conforms to a selfish mindset, he was not ready to be married in the first place. I am super disappointed, but can't wait till the reunion to see if Dr. Pepper really gives Shaquille the business. But I am disappointed because I felt like he held himself out to be spiritual and I feel like he should have put more in the marriage in terms of his relationship with the Lord. However, I'm not saying that that speaks to how strong or what his relationship is like with the Lord because we know many Christians, they have very, they have failed marriages. So I'm not saying that that is an indication of his relationship, because of course I don't know that, but I put a higher value and expectation on those who are spiritual and who are following the God of the Bible, which I assumed, and you know what happens when you make assumptions about people that he was, that it was even more disappointing to me that I saw them, and I could be wrong, but I saw them as a Christian couple 
And for that reason, I really wanted them to win. And I think because it has not worked out at this point, I am super, super disappointed. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'm still holding out hope. We still have more episodes after the reunion to see where are they now. And I am still hoping that they were able to redeem their relationship. However, because Shaquille moved to Texas, I think that that puts an even greater barrier on them rekindling their relationship. But I hope for some just craziness that he is able to get his job back in Nashville and move back because I think that he should move back instead of Kirsten moving to Austin because he changed the goalpost and she did not but let me know what you think about my expectation for this couple and wanting them to win because I think that they held themselves out to be a spiritual couple let me know what you think in the comments. Well, that's all for this episode. What is your thoughts on this reunion? What's your opinion on how harsh McKinley was towards Dominique? What do you think the reason was that Eris was not into Jasmine? Are you surprised that Chris has a backbone to speak up for himself? Did you not see the jabs Gina took at Clint in this episode? Does Jasmine's full breakdown show that she is weak as Eris alludes? Of the moving reasons Shaquille gave for his no on decision day, which one do you believe? Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, that puts this reunion part one in the books. Until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.